it is very unfortunate but we all are living in a society where love marriages are a disgrace but arranged marriage with exchange of dowry gives you all the glory Hey guys hope you all doing good I'm Arna and I'm an aspiring law student I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to speak on a topic like dowry death which is a very sensitive yet a very significant social stigma since generations in our society Before heading to the legalities of dowry I want to start from where it all began and why Traditionally dowry means gifts that are given by the parents of the bride at the time of her marriage In the ancient Hindu customs dowry was performed as kanyadan or varadakshina where parents voluntarily out of love used to give presents and gifts to the newlyweds as a support for their new journey as daughters weren't able to inherit the property under the hindu law but with the passage of time this became a very forceful and a harsh practice and it's not only the groom's family to be blamed sometimes the bride's family they get into this transgression just to show off their social status this gradually becomes a deep rooted social stigma now how does a law define dowry as the dowry prohibition act 1961 defines dowry as any property or valuable security given or agreed to be given directly or indirectly a by one party to a marriage to other party to the marriage b by the parents of either party to a marriage or any other person at before or after the marriage as a consideration of the marriage of the said parties the dowry prohibition act 1961 was enacted to prohibit giving and taking of dowry and its related offenses which came into force from 1st July 1961 and the offense of dowry death was inserted in 1986 by the virtue of section 304b and 498a of the IPC so the section 304b of IPC talks about dowry death where a death of a woman is caused by any burns or bodily injuries occurring otherwise under normal circumstances within 7 years of her marriage and it is shown that soon before her death she was subjected to cruelty or harassment by her husband regarding dowry then such death is called a dowry death and such husband or relative shall be deemed to have caused her death the nature of this offense is cognizable and non bailable besides this section 306 of ipc that is abatement to commit suicide can be also charged under dowry death and it's called dowry suicide this is very shocking but in 2012 8233 dowry linked death cases were reported according to national crime bureau of india as recently as 2017 7000 deaths were reported the dowry death cases rose from 19 per day in 2001 to 21 per day in 2016 india has an alarming trend that sees 20 women die every day due to harassment over dowry either compelled to commit suicide 
or murdered. Now, what could be the elementary grounds of dowry and its offenses? Guys, I really don't want to tell you all the conventional regular objectives which you might already know or can find on any article or video related to this topic. To be really honest, such evil practices to still prevail in our society is solely due to the lack of compassion, integrity and morality amongst us. No matter how educated you are or how wealthy you are or if you are poor or whatever caste or creed you belong to. It's all dependent on your nature, your integrity, your virtues that makes you feel and think about such social malices. Now, it's not only the in-laws are wrong. Sometimes, the daughter's families, they don't support them if they ever go and bring a problem in front of them. Just because what the society will think if their daughter breaks the monotony and thinks of living her life on her own terms, she again comes on the radar of this idiotic society. Guys, this is where the real women empowerment, the real feminism is required. Where we let women have the courage to leave their in-laws' house whenever they are treated wrong. You won't be able to help a woman after she dies. No matter how many PhDs a woman earn, or forget about PhDs, forget about education. Being educated doesn't make you a war of a woman or any bigger as a person. It's just that a woman's identity, respect and liberty to live in her in-laws' house is decided upon how much or how many kilos of gold or cash or vehicles or appliances she brings in dowry for her in-laws. You see, she is the goddess Lakshmi of her in-laws' house just because she brought enough dowry with her. The viewers of this video, stop this sinful custom. If you ever see it in your family or anywhere around, stop it right away, take action against it. No matter what is your age or who are you, your one good effort, your one good thought is enough to change this world. Thank you.